Good morning, church. Isn't it great to be in God's house this morning? Amen. Come on, let me hear you this morning. I'm going to invite you to stand with us. And we're just going to pray. And I'm going to invite you to join us in worship this morning. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you that you have brought us here. That you have brought us here, God, in this beautiful, beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So, Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. And we thank you, God, for what you are going to do in and through us, God. The walls that are going to be taken down, God. The areas of our life that are going to be made well, God. We thank you in advance. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let me see the joy of the Lord in your heart this morning. Don't be afraid to move. Come on. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones, yeah. I try with all my mind. But I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. Just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not 
thankful this morning for what God has done in your life. Let me hear you. Let's raise up our voices this morning and say, God, we thank you for what you're doing, what you've done, what you will do. Come on. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And if your sister or brother is next to you and he's not up, come on, I want you to tell him to get up. Get up so that we can declare this as a church this morning. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, come on. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. that you've moved us from here to where we are today, God. We thank you. You picked me up. You turned me around. You placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior because you healed my heart. You changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. On, let's give the Lord a resounding sound of praise. We say thank you, God. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for changing us, God. Thank you for giving us purpose, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for changing the destiny, oh God, of our lives. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Maybe somebody today, or maybe more than somebody, maybe quite a few of you, maybe you come and you just want to say, I just have to give thanks today. I have to give thanks today. And you just want to come right now, come right up with me right here to the mic and just saying, you know what? I just have to give thanks today for this reason. I, I'm just going to invite you to come. I'll just wait a few moments and just, just begin to step out of your seat saying, yes, I have something I just want to give thanks to God about today. And I want to share it with the church family today. I want to share that today. Just come right now. If you say, yes, I have something I want to give him thanks for today. We love you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Maria, come. Come on. You didn't have to travel very far, did you? I just want to thank, thank God for sustaining me through uh, everything I'm going through right now. And I feel the Holy Spirit's presence every moment. And that's the only way I could get through. And I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you know Maria's backstory and all that she's passed through in these uh, recent weeks, please talk with her afterwards. She can explain it more fully. But I, I just want to tell you, no matter what you're going through, right, Maria? Because if she's here today testifying to that, then I can just tell you, no matter what it is you're going through, God can carry you. God can sustain you. God can carry you. Amen. Estella, come. Come on. Real quick. Praise the Lord because he is an answering God. We've been praying for my grandson, Jeff, uh, to come to church, and he has been coming to church. I'm sorry he's here. <laughs> I didn't want him we love you, Jeff. I didn't want him to hear, but I, I've been praying that he would go to youth night, and he came last Friday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's a proud giving thanks, Grandma. Come on. Come, come. Bless it. What a, what a privilege it's been getting to know Jeff, man. Rosalind. Uh, I miss a terrible accident. It's God who brought me here. Amen. My car turned, and the devil was car in front of me. But it's, a, I don't know, it's my heel hook somewhere, did happen, and then make my uh, car turn like this, and then nothing happened to me. It was a terrible, terrible accident. I prayed to God, God I say thank you to him. Amen. Thank the Lord for his keeping, his protection, even in the midst of the accidents. And, and, and we thank the Lord for you, Rosalyn. Thank you. And Joaquin. Just a little uh, quick thanks to God for a good start to the school year uh, for my daughters. That's awesome. it. Amen. Thank you, Joaquin. Amen. Brother George, come. Give me thanks to the Lord. 
thank God for, I thank God for a lady in the Bible that had her issue of blood for 12 long years. And she went to all kind of positions and she could not be made well. And she heard about this man called Jesus. One day she was, he was in town. She was a Samaritan, had no part of God, folks. The Bible said she crossed her way through the crowd. And the Bible said, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And I'm going to sing this song that I believe she sung. Oh, it is Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul, for I have touched, touched the hem of his garment, and his blood, his blood has made me, oh yes, I tried, tried all that I could. It seemed like nothing did, did me any good. And then I heard about a man. And one day I saw him standing by. And I decided to give him a try. And I am so very glad that I did. And I hope to my God, my saint, my friends in this church, that I live to see the day that this old world will give my Lord a try. And I believe they will be glad also, like myself and the woman with the issue of blood. For I probably was the woman because I love all of God's angels. They are the best gift God ever gave, man. Amen. Amen. Thank you, George. Giving thanks for his healing touch, his power, yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to give the Lord praise today in song. Amen. God bless you. Praise your name. Mm. Let's raise a hallelujah this morning. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I praise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Oh, I raise a I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me.
12, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers. They shall not overflow you, overcome you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God. It continues to say that you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant, when I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved. I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one, no one who can deliver out of my hands. I work, and who will reverse it? I work. He works. There is no one else who can reverse what God has done. So let's raise it up this morning. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, heaven comes to fight for me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just so overwhelmed this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you love us so much. Father, and when the enemy wants to remind us of our past, God, we pray that you may remind him of his future and that, God, that you have all authority and you have all victory and that we'd be able to stand on your promises that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, Father, I thank you, God, that you will take us through the fires of life. You will take us through the rivers that we feel that are just drowning us and too high for us to bear. Father, we thank you for the love that you have for us. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. And Lord, we invite you in this place. We invite you to move our hearts, to move our minds, to move those areas of our lives that you desire to change. God, so that we can draw closer to you. Church, how many of you want to continue to see the move of God? in this service this morning? How many of you continue to want to see a move of God in your life and you believe it? How many of you believe it? And so I'm going to invite you to just open up your hands right in front of you. I know I may do this a lot, but I think it's so symbolic. It's so symbolic because it's letting go of those things in our lives that we have hold, held so dear to our hearts that really don't matter. Only he does. So as Gabby leads us in this song, I pray that you would, your heart's desire and that, you would, that, that God would just move in your life and that you would give him permission to do that because you know that he's a gentleman. He is not going to push himself on you, but would you just invite him to do what he wants to do in your life? Put aside your plans and that you'd be willing to say, God, whatever your plan is, whatever your plan is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mountains are still being moved. 
to the Lord. that the Lord would just speak it to her heart about. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. I, I just sort of sense that some of us think that when God moves in our lives, it's to criticize and to bash us down and to push us into a little a hole and to, you know, not necessarily bring good things, but to, to judge and to punish. Um, and the grace, that the verse that's been on my heart all week has been, um, the last verse of 2 Corinthians, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And when God moves, he wants to come with grace and love and fellowship, that deep fellowship with a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Yes, God, thank you. Thank you for your word, oh God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for that grace, for your love, for your fellowship even now, Holy Spirit. We say thank you that you're here in this place. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We just got to sing that chorus again, Gabby. We are here for Come on, lift it up as your prayer to him as a church today. Come and do what you do. We are here for you, come and do what you do, set our hearts on you, come and do what you do, cause we need a move. That's our prayer, that's our prayer. We need a move. Lord, hear the heart's cry of your children today. This is a move. We believe it, Lord. We believe it. This is a move. You know, Holy Spirit, you're here in this place. This is a Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, oh God. This is a move. Holy Spirit, distribute the gifts as you desire today. Impart as you desire today. Strengthen your church. Strengthen your church today. Speak to hearts and lives. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I know some of you today, that, that word that came from that scripture, just as Emma was sharing it, just, I know, I know that that was speaking very directly to some of you here today, speaking very directly that God is a God who loves you, whose grace is abounding. His grace is abounding. He desires fellowship with you. The Son of Man did not come to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sam, Sam Norte, are you in the room here? Someplace, thanks, Sam. He's going to come and lead us to God's throne of grace and prayer. If you're able to, maybe you'll stand together 
as he comes and let's just pray and let's intercede today and let's join our hearts together as we continue just in an attitude of openness to the Holy Spirit and what he's doing and how he wants to speak and, and just use even this time as Sam leads us in praying just for the Holy Spirit to come and work. Um, I'd like to read a, a scripture from Psalms 107, 19 to 21. And it says, um, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from distraction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to, to humankind. Heavenly Father, this morning, I want to just say thank you, Lord, for even today. Thank you for the chance to both just gather as members of this fellowship to just raise our hands in worship, oh Lord. Father, we thank you for, for just this, this day, oh Lord, to say thank you. We just thank you for the air that we breathe. We thank you for your forgiveness of our sins, oh God, Jesus. Father, at this very time, I just bring up our sisters, Bertha and Yvette, before you, oh Lord. Father, we pray that you will heal them of every and any infirmity right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that every cell, every vein, every muscle in their body will start to act right now in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. We are praying for complete healing. Father, we are praying that there will be healing in their bodies and healing in their minds, oh God, Jesus. Now, Father God, you know that of a truth, you are with them through the storm, Jesus. Father, we are praying that they will come here and testify of your goodness, oh Lord, of your goodness to them, oh Lord, Jesus. Father, we are praying that the healing will be, will be manifested in the name of Jesus. We also pray, commit our sister Florence into your hands, O oh Lord. Father, your word makes me understand that he's at peace whose mind is stayed on you. Father, we pray that our sister Florence's mind will be stayed on you, Jesus. We come against any, any, any fairy that, that, that is being thrown at her mind, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you will secure her in the blood, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, I'm praying that you will just give her peace. You will give her peace. Father, oh God, your peace that surpasses our understanding will be her portion this morning, Jesus. We come against the works of the enemy against her, oh Lord. And Father, we are praying that she will triumph by the help of the Holy Spirit. Please, Father, do the work that no man can do, oh Lord. Do the work that only you can do, that you alone will be, will be given all the glory and honor this morning, Jesus. Praying for the nation of America this morning, Jesus. Praying for the leadership, oh Lord. Father, we are praying for godly wisdom. We are praying that you would infuse our leaders with godly wisdom, oh God. That God, they will make choices that would influence this country in the right direction, oh God, Jesus. We come against any, any negative, negative leadership, oh Lord. Or anything that, that has been put in place to do, to do likewise, oh Lord. We pray that God, your own power... Your own power will be over these leaders, O oh Lord. And Father, even as you use Daniel, O oh Lord, in Babylon, you will use these leaders for your own, for your own work, O oh Lord Jesus. We pray for the president and his cabinet that God, once again, you will grant them godly wisdom. We are praying for state leaders and county leaders, O oh Lord, that God, you grant them godly wisdom to do what you would have them do, Jesus, and not what they would want to do, Father. We also pray for the persecuted church, Lord. Father, I'm praying that in spite of what is going around them, that God, their faith in you would increase. That God, their faith in you would grow and grow and grow. That Father of God, like Stephen, oh Lord, they will look up unto you, Jesus, in spite of everything that is going on around them, oh God. Father, we are praying that, oh God, you will grant them protection. Protection against the wiles of the enemy, Lord Jesus. We are praying, oh Lord, that God, for missions as well, that God, you would help our missionaries around the world who are spreading your word. Father, we are praying that you would encourage them when times get hard, O oh Lord. Father, we are praying that you would provide for them when times get hard, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that we as well, O oh Lord, we will be your hands and your feet to those around us here, O oh God, in ministering to them, O oh Lord. Because, Father, O oh God, it is your heartbeat, O oh Lord, to reach out to the unsaved. Father, we, we, we also thank you for this, for this church and the work that is going on. Father, we are just praying for, we are praying for, for funding, oh Lord. We are praying that God, you will provide. We are praying that even as you have begun this good work in this assembly, oh God, you will bring, you will bring it to a fruitful conclusion in the name of Jesus. That Father, come on, on deadline day. We shall come here to inspect and be glad that this work 
is because of you and not man, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you once again for everybody here this morning. We just give you all the glory and honor this morning, Jesus. Father, do the work that only you can do in our hearts and in our minds, O oh Lord Jesus. Pray that every mind here will be stayed on you this morning, Jesus. Once again, we come against any work of the enemy, against any of us here, O oh Lord. And we pray your peace this morning. We pray your peace over every mind here this morning. We pray your protection over every mind here this morning, Jesus, O oh God. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful to be in God's house today? Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn around to several people around you? And say, well, as they're saying hi, we have a very special couple with us this morning. And uh, I'll, I'll give them a, a chance in just a moment. Um, she served alongside um, her pastor, her, her husband, um, for over 28 years here. And uh, she's just making her way to her seat. Isn't it great to love on people again here and for us to be loved on by you, Susan? Maybe Susan and her husband, Kurt, can stand together. You just want to say hi to everybody and hi, Kurt. Kurt, you want to say hello to everybody? Um, I am overwhelmed. I, I turned to Kurt a few minutes ago and said I'm just going to cry. And I'm not a crier, but you are in my heart. I live a long ways away now in North Carolina. Uh, don't I look like a North Carolina Southerner? <laughs> I mean, come on. Lake hair, I don't care is what we call this. Um, but you have been in my heart always. And I went out like Naomi in the Bible. I went out empty. And the Lord I come back full. <laughs> God has given me an absolutely wonderful, wonderful man. We both had a great deal of loss, um, but the Lord has restored us. And we're so grateful to God for that. So grateful. God is so good. You will always be part of my family. And if you're ever at Lake Guest in North Carolina, can I do this? Come see us, okay? <laughs> Well, you have to meet Kurt as well, because he, he is a blessing. He is a blessing, and uh, thank you guys. We, we love you. We love you both, and so thankful to have you with us this weekend. Yes, amen. All right, let me welcome you again to Faith Assembly of God. We're glad that you're here with us. I just want to remind you, our youth, that is sixth grade and up, is having a youth rally this Friday. So if you want to participate in that, uh, please contact Sean Smith. That's for sixth grade and up, and you will meet here at the church at 530 in order to go to that. Super kids, come on down. That's three, four, and five-year-olds, and kindergarten through fifth grade. Come, it's the one time we let you run in the sanctuary. Come on down. Let's go. Put a little step in it. Come on down. If this is the first time that your child is going to Super Kids, um, please go down with them in order to register them. All right, church, let's pray for our children. Father, we thank you for those that you have entrusted into our hands, and we pray for each one of them that they would have their eyes wide open to see you and their ears ready to hear you and their hearts open to experience you. We pray for every teacher that you would give them all that they need in order to be able to pour your love and your truth into these children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, children, you can go down that way to Super Kids. Enjoy. Have fun. What a blessing it is to be in God's house. What a great, great time of freely worshiping the Lord and just seeing his spirit just move in hearts and lives. I love it because when you're a part of, a, a, again, a church family, church family that's uh, far from being, I guess what you'd say, you know, homogeneous, but a heterogeneous, you know, group of people that come, uh, you know, just every ethnicity and background and culture. I love it because, you know, we all come and we, we express very differently, don't we? We express very differently, but we come to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus, right? That's why we're here. 
And once it goes to, uh, you know, uh, again, something that focuses on us, ourselves, well, then there's, there's something there that we're missing. We want to make sure in all of it that we are just continually open and ready for just however God wants to move. But we know as he moves, it's going to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited, as you heard in the announcement, and really cool, I think, even as Maria was praying it, even just now for the children, that we've embarked today as a church on a new study during our Sunday morning connect group. But it's also something that I want to link for our next several weeks together here in the sanctuary as we talk about experiencing God. Experiencing God. Uh, again, it's a study um, put together uh, um, uh, Henry Blackaby and Claude King are the authors of the particular book and workbook that the uh, Sunday Morning Connect group is going through. Um, but I, I do pray that it's something that helps us, not just individually, but as a church overall, to know and do the will of God. So let me encourage you once again, what we do here during this 11 a.m. time on Sunday mornings uh, is very one way, isn't it? You know, especially during this teaching, preaching time. It's very one way. There, we don't stop and take Q&A. You know, we don't have interaction back and forth. I might give you, you know, very, very little interaction with me. So be a part of that Sunday morning connect group if you can. Be a part of that, of that 930 time. It gives you that opportunity to be able to interact with you know, questions and, and ask, 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 ask one another you know, certain things that maybe you'd say, I don't know, how do I ask that during a Sunday morning time? I do want to say that any time I'm speaking on a Sunday or any of us are speaking from the church here, Please know, during the week, don't hesitate to reach out, to email. You can email me directly. You can email the church and, and just say, this is for Pastor John. With any questions, you can call me. You can find out my information. You can approach me after service and just say, hey, can I talk to you during the week? I have some questions about the message today. That is the best way. And please, I, I just welcome that. But be a part of that Sunday morning time if you can. Like you heard, there's other connect groups as well. There's other connect groups that are going to be starting up soon. But be a part. Of, of these times where you can sharpen one another, interact with one another, discuss God's word, and connect with God's word and one another in a way that I pray will help us to grow more and more as a church family. Can you say amen? Now, there are, according to the study, what are referred to as the seven realities of experiencing God. Seven realities of experiencing God. Okay, so first, it's the idea up here that God is always at work around you. Uh, secondly, God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal. There we go. Uh, thirdly, God invites you to become involved with him in that work. Fourthly, God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself his purposes, and his ways. Fifthly, you'll see invitation, God's invitation for you to work with him always leads you to a crisis. I think there's our, our, main, our main idea, the crisis of belief, a crisis of belief that requires faith and action. Number six, you must make major adjustments in your life to join in what he is doing. And finally, seven there you see up on the picture, you come to know God by experience as you do what? Obey him. And he accomplishes his work through you. And what I'd like to do during our time here over the next several weeks is delve into these seven realities, um, these principles, as we focus on key passages of scripture. Always, might I say again, always letting God's word, the Bible, be the ultimate foundation and the truth test for anything that we teach or preach. Can you say amen? amen? And my prayer is that as God's word speaks, that you and I would be moved to action. And that in turn would cause us individually, and I pray as a church, to experience God in a fresh way. In a fresh way. And that brings us back to reality number one. God is always at work around you. God is always at work around you. As we come to the book of Exodus, we're told that there has arisen great fear among 
the Egyptians. Fear over a massive people group living right among them called the Hebrews or the Israelites. So the Egyptian government makes a decision on how to deal with this threat to their people and nation. Oppress the Israelites. Enslave them. And stop their growth by terminating the lives of their babies. Particularly their baby boys. Throwing them into the Nile River. But ironically, it will be from that same river of death where life and deliverance will spring up for the Israelites in a little boy named Moshe. Moses whose name speaks of his own deliverance from that river as he was pulled or drawn out, as his name means, from the water. Yet nothing about the deliverance that Moses would be used to bring his people would be done quickly or easily. In fact, long before the children of Israel um, would find themselves even wandering in the desert years later. Moses will do some wandering of his own. As he runs into the desert, running for his life for a crime that, yes, he did commit. In fact, at the birth of his son, Moses will confess, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. You see, if you're among the Israelites living in Egypt, believing that God was at work in the midst of your pain and suffering would have been the last thing that you're thinking, the last thing that you're feeling. And if you're Moses, you're not so convinced of God's work happening all around you either. In fact, you're probably feeling and thinking just the opposite. It's just the opposite. Your life, even from infancy, has been filled with uncertainty. And really for your people group, oppression and fear, not to mention for yourself personally as you're growing up, you're experiencing a crisis of identity. Your biological family and people group have been enslaved by the very leaders whose house you've grown up in, the very ones whom you now find yourself fleeing from in order to save your life. Days in a foreign land have turned to weeks then to months, then to years, even decades. No, rather than believing that God's always at work all around you, you actually might be wondering, God, where are you? What are you doing? Are, are you even at work? God, why aren't you doing something, anything, anything? In fact, the more you think about it, the more you realize at this point that the act of murder that you committed so many years ago in taking the life of an abusive Egyptian slave driver was really your attempt to play God, to free your people your way in your time. After all, since God wasn't doing something, you had to. You had to step in. You had to get the ball rolling for him, so to speak, give him a little help a little shove, or so you thought. But whether you realize it or not, in the midst of it all, in the midst of the groaning, in the midst of the crying, in the midst of the whips, and even the killings, in the midst of the running and confusion, in the midst of the pain, and yes, even the silence, God was at work all the while. Yes, 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 yes. Can anybody say amen for your own life? How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Thank you, Susan, for that testimony. In fact, chapter 2 of Exodus ends by saying, The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to, somebody finish it, God. God. God heard their groaning and remembered. Yes, 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 yes. He remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned 
about them. Thank you, Father, for your word. Open up, O oh God, our eyes, our ears, our hearts, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, to the natural eye, to the natural mind, God was either non-existent, impotent, or lacking in compassion. Those are usually our three choices, aren't they? Either non-existent, impotent, he's not able, or lacking in compassion and concern. But all the while, God was at work. He was hearing. He was hearing. He was remembering. The Bible tells us he was looking. He was looking. He was even breaking over the plight of the people of Israel. His heart was breaking, I believe. And he was preparing the right plan. Well, that's speaking very humanly, isn't it? He already knew that plan. But he was preparing the right players. The right timing. Amen. See, maybe it is more interactive than we thought. He was getting ready and getting the people ready for what he was about to do for what he was going to do. And this same story of God's hidden fingerprint showing up in lives and circumstances without his footprint ever being seen, I want to remind you, it's all over the pages of the Bible. Where you look back and you go, yeah, that's God's fingerprint all over it. Once we, once we do the dusting for those fingerprints, we can see it now. We can see it. But where, where were his footprints? No, no, no. We might not have seen that, but we could see his fingerprint all over it. And you see it time and again throughout the pages of the Bible. And I know that there are many stories here today in this room and, and even watching today. You'd say, that's been the story. That's also been showing up in the pages of my life. His fingerprint not necessarily always being evident right there. But as I look back, I begin to see and notice, yes, this was the mark. This was the handiwork of God. You see, a man named Elijah might not have known it, but God was already at work preparing the way for him to be fed in the midst of a famine. A young woman named Esther might have had no idea about what was ahead, but God was already at work preparing the way for her to become queen and rescue her people. The disciples were wondering where in the world would they get enough food to feed such a massive crowd that was before them. But little did they know that God was already at work, preparing to feed the multitude with just a little boy's lunch. A follower of Jesus named Philip, whom Leslie Latona spoke with us about just a few weeks ago, might not have known it, but God was already at work preparing a government official from Ethiopia to hear the message of a suffering servant and Messiah named Jesus. No, nothing, nothing would have happened that day. Philip's preaching would have been futile and useless if God wasn't already at work in that Ethiopian treasurer's heart and life. Praise God for the way that he works in those in finance. Can anybody here say amen? Thank you for those who work in finance. May God use you in your field. You see, God is already at work around you and me. God's already at work. It was true back then, and it's still true today. It's still true today. In fact, I can't help but think of how it was because God was already at work in the life of a hard-nosed Irish hockey player named George. That the message of Jesus changed his life when he heard it. And it changed his family. And guess what? It changed this church. This church. It was because God was at work all along in a young man named Rob that when he heard the message of Jesus, he was saved. He was delivered from drugs. He had established himself quite a reputation in Spring Valley High School back in the day. And he was given a passion to share the good news of Jesus with others. I mean, a passion that sent him to this day now around the world. And it set the youth group right here on fire. On fire. It was because God was at work all along 
in the life of this church and in the lives of its people, even when things had gone awry. And how many of you know things go awry in churches? Because churches are made up of sinful people saved by grace, just like you and me. Just like you and me. Yes, 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 yes. And again, God was at work all along in the lives of his people, even when others thought God's done working in that place. And young people like myself experienced life change in Jesus and God's call to full-time ministry. And it's because God is still at work in this place. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. God is still at work in this place and all around us that, that people, young and old, continue to experience a deep hunger for God. They continue to experience real life in Jesus and the outpouring of his spirit in their lives and God's call to go, to give, to serve, to get into his word, to call upon him in prayer and, and to go wherever he might lead them. And I'm so thankful. If, if you were just a, a fly on the wall here this past Friday night, I was just one of those parents dropping off and picking up afterwards and, and giving a hand maybe afterwards, which I'll encourage other parents to do. Give a help and a hand, even if you're picking up at the end of a, of a student ministry on a Friday night, say, hey, Sean and team, is there any way that I can help for a few minutes before my student and I leave? But if you were a fly on the wall here, I'm telling you, when I came and picked up my sons, man, the student leaders here, they were excited about what God did. I don't know, I'd have to guess there was maybe like 30 students here. But it wasn't just about the numbers. It wasn't just about the numbers. And I'm probably being very conservative, Angela, right? Uh, you know, again, it was about, you could see, there was something God was doing. Something God was doing. And I just want to say he's doing it. Amen. He's doing it. He's doing it. We've been praying, God, do it again. Do it again. And if we'll be open, if, if we'll ask God to give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to believe and receive and put his word into action, we'll see that he's doing it. He's doing it. And might I pause just to say... It's because God is doing it that I know that our spiritual enemy is fighting as hard as he is. He's fighting as hard as he is. I, I don't want to make things overly dramatic and this and that, but all I could say, I tell you is that even Friday night after this great time with all the students and, and some here and, and student ministry leaders saying, yes, I'll bring home students. Yes, I'll make sure that students in the community have a way to get here and a way to get home. Let me tell you, the enemy was in operation trying to just put fear. Again, just, just being what he is to kids out in the world who don't know the hope of Jesus, who only know things, how to fill their lives with the stuff of this world, whether it be sex and drugs, and yes, as even was encountered this past Friday night, guns and violence. Everybody was all good, everybody was safe, but let me tell you something. It, it just right away, I know the enemy was trying to use that. Say, no, 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 don't go there. Don't do that. No, it's too dangerous. You don't want to do that type of ministry. And I knew in my heart of hearts just afterwards just saying, no, that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. That's exactly what the enemy wants to do. To stop God's church from reaching lives that need him. It's not the healthy who need a doctor. It's the sick. It's the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's all of us. But may we never get to that place of saying, no, 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 let's just leave somebody, uh, let's leave that, that person or that student, let's, let's leave them to somebody else. We are that somebody else. God's at work. God's at work all around us, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that what we attempt to do for God will not go without a fight. It will come with a fight. You see, I can't help but wonder, what if? What if? What if you knew that God was always working around you? What if you really let it sink deep in? You always knew God was working all around you. What if? What if you knew that God was always at work in his church? Maybe for some of you watching, or even here today, that you knew that he was always at work in that church you're maybe ready to give up on. What if? 
What if you knew that he was always at work in the life of that wife? In the life of that husband you've been giving up on? What if you knew he was always at work in the life of that son you've been ready to give up on? Or that daughter who you're thinking, she's never, she's never going to come back. What if you knew that he was actually working on that person's heart that you considered unreachable? Maybe at your office. Maybe maybe right in your complex. What if you knew that God was already at work in the heart of that man or woman that everybody else points their finger at and condemns? As Emma reminded us today, those final words in Scripture. That's not why God's here. But what if you knew he was at work? Everybody else condemned and brushed them off. What if you knew that God was already working in the heart of that man whom everyone else had given up on? Or you knew that he was always at work in your life in spite of how chaotic things have become? What if you knew that he was always taking every piece of life's puzzle? Every piece. And putting them together in such a way to create one of the most magnificent and beautiful mosaics that no human being could ever piece together. And not necessarily for your happiness, but for your holiness. And ultimately, for his glory. For his glory. That you and I could point and say, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he did it. How would that change your perspective in life? If you knew that he was always at work, if you knew that he, how would that change your perspective in the pain? What kind of impact would that have on your faith and mine? What if that pain, that sickness, that weakness, that loss was actually something God was using to bring others, including yourself, Closer to him. To him. What if God was actually using it to even bring deliverance from bondage for others around you? That's exactly what God was doing for Moses and the people of Israel. And he's still the same God today. Can you say amen? He's still the same God. In fact, Jesus said, my father is working until now, and I am working. Or as some looser translations will put it, and I too am always working. I am working. My father is working. I am working. And you want to know what that tells me? Because God is always at work around you and me. Number one, you and I have every reason to get excited. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Maybe give him an elbow to wake him up. Get excited. Get excited. Think of what Jesus' words mean. Think of the power and the peace of those words when you and I encounter an issue or a problem. Some of you are living testimonies of one problem, one, in, one, one issue after another. Instead of, God, what are you doing? God, what are you doing? Anybody ever sound like that? I know we point the finger at our toddlers or our little ones, right? No, come on, that's you and me. That's you and me. God, what are you doing? Instead of that, it's okay. okay. Oh, it's, it's this. It's, okay, God, what are you doing? What are you up to? I know you're up to something. Okay, God, what are you up to right now? Come on, let's be real. I'm just like you. Again, we go through things. That's not our immediate response and reaction. It's like, oh my gosh, as soon as I, all of a sudden, like, I'm going to the hospital, like, all of a sudden, the the, the pit in the gut, you know, the pit in the stomach, all of a sudden, the the feelings of, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh. Folks, I got that phone call on Friday night about, again, that, that event that transpired and, and one of the boys calling me, one, one of the youth, and all of a sudden I, I was thinking, I was thinking about our driver. And, I, and all of a sudden all these things went through my mind real quick, boom, 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 boom. 
Of course, because we know, right? That's reality. That's been the real story for some of you in this room. But I, I, just, I just pray that, that you and I could get to a place in, in, in our walks of faith, not of feeling. Of just being able to, okay, God, what are you up to? What have, I, I know that you're at work. I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm feeling right now. But God, I know that you're at work. I know that you're up to something, God. What are you doing in the midst of this? I know, I know God, you're going to use this for my good. I know that you're going to use this for my good. I know that there's someone out there that you want to reach through my story. I know there's somebody that you want to minister to, Lord. I know that he, he gives us comfort so that we can comfort others. And, and God, I know, I know, God, you're up to something. I know there's someone that you're, 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 you're speaking to today, that you're preparing in my path. Got someone today that you're arranging Lord, his or her Google calendar and mine, and, and you're creating a divine appointment today that I, I wasn't planning on, and, and it's going to interrupt my flow and my schedule and my agenda. But God, help me today to know that you're always at work around me. God, help me to get excited. I know that there's someone today, someone. You see, when we realize that God's always at work around you and me, we have every reason to get excited. Can you say amen? Amen. Secondly, because God's always at work around you and me, you and I are called to get in tune. Get in tune. I don't know about you, but knowing that God is always at work causes me to really, really want to get my spiritual radar on. I really want to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Really want to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. I was so thankful that a couple here was sharing with our prayer group on Wednesday night during a prayer conference call that they had an opportunity to go and be with one of their Jewish neighbors uh, after Yom Kippur, after the Day of Atonement, and there's a day where they're fasting and denying themselves all day, and they had that opportunity to to now be with a neighbor and and just you know and just. Uh, just show the love of Jesus, just be their president. And we were praying, and, and, and I know that they came away just knowing, like, okay, we just want to be in tune with the Holy Spirit here. We don't want to try to force Messiah Jesus down anybody's throat here. It doesn't work like that. I, I want to be in tune. Anybody else want to be in tune with God's Holy Spirit? And when the time comes and saying, yes, we want to be in tune here to know, is this the right time to speak or is this the right time to listen? Is this the right time to listen? I want, to, I want to be aware and sensitive to how God might be using something as unlikely as it is for his purposes. It's the prayer of one of the pastors we were recently praying for, Pastor uh, Alimjan Yamit, who has served 12 years of his 15-year sentence in a Chinese prison. But listen to what he states. He says, he could have sang that opening song today, Kith, because he says, I thank God for sending me here so that I can share the gospel and live it out. What's happening? Most of us would be like, God, get me out of here. Instead, he's like, not only am I excited, the guy is like in tune with the Holy Spirit, and he realizes God's Spirit has actually led him to that particular place as awful as it is. Because he realizes God has a plan and a purpose for him there to bring life, to bring real freedom, as Paul talked about. Real freedom to men and women that are in that prison. He realizes that God's at work even in the midst of the hardest circumstances. He's a man that's in tune. He knows God hasn't abandoned him, but has a purpose for him. I pray that that would be your prayer and mine every day. God, help me to be in tune right now. Help me to be in tune in this hospital room right now. Janice, got to put you on the spot. I think Janice is a woman here who probably has used her hospital visits, like because she herself had to go to the hospital, for more opportunities to evangelize and share about Jesus with people than anybody I've ever heard of in my life. I know it's not about you, Janice. I know it's all about the Lord. But it's like all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, so I was witnessing to the person next to me. And I'm like, Janice, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, I prayed with this woman to receive Jesus last night. Okay, but how are you, Janice? Oh, I'm okay, you know. I'm just wondering, what, what would happen if we made it our prayer saying, 
Holy Spirit, show me. Holy, because Listen, when you read the history of the early church in the book of Acts, you constantly see the Holy Spirit spoke. And the Holy Spirit did this. And, the Holy Spirit, and we say, oh, good morning, Holy Spirit. Would you just show me today? Show me today the people that you want to bring across my path. Would you just open up those opportunities? Would you give me those divine, would you give me those divine appointments? Would you keep me in tune with you today? Holy Spirit, show us today where it is you're working so we can be a part of it. So we can be a part of it. Granted, something might just look like another problem, even in the community all around us right now. But it could very well be an opportunity where God is at work. Where God is at work and he's getting ready to do something. And that leads me to my third point, number three, because God is always at work around you and me, get on board. Tell your neighbor, get on board. board. You know, it's an awesome thing when God is sending a wave and doing something. Right? He's sending his wave and doing something, but it's even more exciting to ride that wave. Right? To get on your boogie board. I don't surf, but I do get on a boogie board. You know? My nephew, he's a big surfer. I can't believe, again, just even the cold as the days might be, he's out there early in the morning surfing the Jersey Shore. You know? And again, it's one thing to just say, oh, that's an awesome wave. Man, it's even more exciting to ride that wave, even if it is, again, on that boogie board, to just ride that wave in and just to be a part of that thrill of just seeing how that wave is just taking you and moving you. And that means, folks, stepping out in faith. That means getting, you know, again, off the shore. That means moving from that place of passivity to activity. From that place of simply potential energy to kinetic energy. Right? And to moving. It's as we get on board with what God is doing that we experience God in a way like we've never experienced before. And for some of us, maybe that's actually why we've been hitting a certain wall in our walk with Jesus. We're like, I've been doing all the right things. You know, I've been going to church, and a lot of times people go, "Ah, I tried that. I tried Jesus. I tried church. I did all those things. But sometimes, again, we find ourselves where we've actually been sitting back passively. And this is not about a, a passive journey. Jesus didn't say, you know, follow me so that you can sit back and watch me fish, guys. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Again, it's about, it's about the action. It's about doing something. And oftentimes we're waiting for someone else to do something. We're waiting for someone else to pray, to study, to serve, to give, to go, to obey. And you wonder sometimes why, why you seem to have hit that wall. Again, it's about getting on board. God's at work. Get on board with it. Remember, as Rick Warren pointed out years ago, you and I don't create the waves, we simply ride them. And when we stop trying to make things happen ourselves, and when we stop trying to manufacture results ourselves, and we finally get on board with what it is God's doing all around us, somebody say, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. And that that brings us to our last point today. Because God's always at work around you and me. Tell your neighbor, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. Uh, I'll I'll ask our musicians to begin to come at this time. Our team to come. Listen, because God is always at work, when you say yes to Jesus... When you say yes to following him, you you better put your seatbelt on. You You better lock it in. I'm telling my boys all the time when they sit in that front passenger seat and the thing starts dinging, ding, ding, ding. Put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. It's the first thing you got to, yeah, and you, listen, God's at work. And you and I begin to get in tune and get on board with what he's doing. Man, we, we better get ready. We better get ready. God's going to take you to places. He's going to take you to people that you never dreamed possible. And might I say, not simply for a vacation or status, but to make a difference for him. 
to make a difference for him. Come on, let's stand together. Let's stand together. The possibilities in him are limitless. Limitless. It's the stories of those that we've been praying for, like Akmal, a recent convert. Where? In Afghanistan. Somebody say, God is saving lives even in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. He says, I was heartbroken by the unrighteousness I saw around me. I saw a program on TV about Jesus. I accepted him as my Savior, and now I am so happy. Folks, we, we, we need to get ready. We, we need to understand this is something to get excited about, to get in tune with, to get on board with, but we need to get ready. God's going to be reaching in and changing hearts and lives of people that we never thought it was going to be possible. We never dreamed it was going to be possible. It's a story of those like Leica, a lady in the United Arab Emirates. She has read the Gospel of Matthew and wants to meet, listen what she wants to meet. She wants to meet face to face with a Christian. She wants to meet face to face with a Christian. I can't begin to tell you the amazing adventure that it has been for me since the time I said yes to Jesus. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I thought as a kid growing up in the church, following Jesus, listening to Jesus music, all that stuff was boring, boring, boring. I wanted to have nothing to do with it. You keep your Keith Green music, I thought, to my older brother. I will listen to LL Cool J. Now you know where I go back to. I'll listen to my ZZ Top. You know, I, I'll listen. I, yeah, I do miss, listen to a lot of mixed genres there. That's, but can I tell you, when Jesus took a hold of my heart and I said yes to him, can I tell you, everything changed. And now I'm really going to show my age. When I put that... 33 LP of Keith Green for him who has ears to hear on that record player in my brother Chris's room at the time. I'm going to tell you right now, it was the same exact lyrics, the same exact melodies. Keith Green playing his piano and singing. Everything was the same except in here. Except in here. Folks, that's because God was at work. It was by his grace. It was something he was already doing. Guess what? It's happening in people, in students, in older folks. It's happening in people all around us all the time. All the time. It's about you and I, though, getting ready. Getting ready for what he wants to do. Folks, listen. For some of you here today, it's got to begin. It's got to begin with you saying yes to Jesus. It's got to begin with you saying yes to Jesus whether you're watching online or here in this room. But right now, in this moment, I pray that you'd say, yes, yes, Jesus. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. As Kivian and the team just begin to, to, just begin to worship with the song. Go ahead. I, I'm just going to invite you to come. Some of you are going to want to come because you're saying, today's the day where I need to say yes to Jesus. I need to say yes to him. Others of you are coming because you're going to say, God, would you make me, would you get me in tune? Would you give me eyes to see ears to hear, hearts to believe that you're at work all around me. I pray that would be our prayer as a church. Would you just begin to come? Let's make this place a prayer, a, a labor room of prayer. A labor room of prayer. It's about him. Saying yes, God, come on. Come on. You are here. He's at work. Moving in our midst. Come on. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Come on, press in today. Press in. Working in this place. I worship you. Press in today. I worship you. We're saying, yes, Jesus. You are here. Moving in our midst. I'm thinking about Rockland County. I worship you. I'm thinking about from Havistraw to Slotesburg. You. Spring Valley to suffer. You are here, working in right in Bergen County, place. in Orange County. I worship you. God, we're declaring it today. You're already at work you. all around us. We want to be in tune with that. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. 
deep light in the darkness my god that is who you he's here are. to meet you say yes to jesus today you are here touching every heart i worship you say yes to him today i worship you declare it over your family i know you're at work in my you family are here i know you're at work in my family lord i know you're at work in my family i worship you i worship you it's you Oh God, do it. I worship you. Use us as your hands and feet. I worship you. Tell them, use me, Lord. You use me, Lord. I know you're at work. I know you're at work, so use me, Lord. Use me at work. I worship you. Use me in my home. Use me in my family.
Jesus, that God's Holy Spirit would fill lives today, that God's Holy Spirit would fill lives today in the name of Jesus, that God would fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit, God would fill you with the wisdom of his Holy Spirit, God would fill you with the anointing of his Holy Spirit, that you would be empowered with everything that God desires to give you and work through you as he's working in hearts and lives all around you, that you would be ready, that you would be sensitive, that you would be wise in that moment, that you would know in that moment what to say, that you need not fear or be afraid of what to say, that God's Holy Spirit would give you everything that you need to say and to do in that moment because he's at work, because he's at work that you can go confidently, that you could share the, the gospel confidently and with boldness and with love and with sensitivity, knowing that God's at work, that you could go confidently, knowing that it's, it's Him. It's Him who's doing the works. It is He who is changing lives. It is He who's opening up hearts to the gospel. It's he who's going to change that husband's heart. It's he that's going to change that son's heart, that daughter's heart. It's he that's going to change that wife's heart. It's he that's going to change that coworker's heart, that classmate's heart. to remain open for as long as you want to stay and pray and worship and sing and just make yourself available to Him. As you go today, when you go, go knowing that God is at work always, all around you. So open your eyes and look at the fields, as Jesus said. They are ripe, they are white unto harvest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. The Lord be with you.